Hey everybody, it's the Board Game Blogger. Today I'm here to review Fire and Axe, a Viking saga. Now what's neat about this game is it's a very unique American style game. Now most American style games have direct conflict with your opponents. Here, however, each player plays a Viking tribe pouring out of Scandinavia in the medieval era and raiding, trading, and settling the various parts of Europe. But because of this, you're sort of playing against the board and you're trying to outdo your opponents, but not through direct conflict, but by people trading more, raiding more, and settling more areas. There are some cards in the game that allow some minor direct conflict, but not quite as much as you would expect in a normal American style game. So this is made by the Ragnar Brothers, the same uh, people who make History of the World and some other really great quality games. And I think if you like an American style game, you know, with uh, the dice rolling and, uh, you know, the great looking pieces, then I think this is a game worth checking out. And because there's not that direct conflict, it might be a little bit better for families to play, you know, where you, you're not going to have as hard feelings at the end. So why don't we take a closer look at how the game is played and at the board itself. So here's kind of uh, the map of Europe and the board. I haven't put everything on the board, just uh, I'm going to zoom in, show a little bit more detailed how, how the game is played, but this just, just gives you a rough view. You can see you've got uh, very kind of creative on how, how the map looks. Uh, you know, there's this massive waterway right here. This is to represent the the rivers that the Vikings would sail down. And uh, all the movement is done by the sea in this game with your Viking longships. If we, if we zoom in here a bit, we can see there's these Saga cards. And the Saga cards are special and unique quests, if you will, that uh, the various players are competing for. So, for instance, there's this one. It's a Denmark card. Now, that's important because at the end of the game, the person with the most Denmark cards gets 10 points for each Denmark saga they've completed. Whereas, if someone's completed, you know, the fourth place player who's, who's completed just one Denmark card, and let's say other people have completed way more, his Denmark card becomes worthless. So, you want to try and compete for these sagas. Here, the goal is to trade. York, Lincoln, and Norwich. So if we go over here to York, Lincoln, and Norwich, we can see that there's a town in Lincoln, but there's no goods of any kind there. Now what happens in the game is you can bring your longboat. So here, so this is the blue player's longboat. We'll zoom out, and for instance, we, each player has these cards which represent the people on the longboat. There's uh, Saga 1, Saga 2, Saga 3. As I mentioned, there's these Saga cards. That's in fact how the game ends. Once enough Sagas have been completed, then the game ends. Now when the longboat, each player only controls one longboat, when the longboat is in port, Norway, Sweden, or Denmark, they can choose to load up with various Vikings. Let's say that's how they load up with four Vikings, and they will put on one tusks. So the tusks are what they can use to trade. And each day, each turn consists of seven days within the week. And an action for the day would be loading up men, loading up goods, sailing, or drawing rune cards. Rune cards are special cards here, which you can play for different abilities. They can only be drawn in your home port of Norway, Sweden, or Denmark, and can only be played out of port. This is different people just staying in port and drawing various cards and replaying them. So let's say, for instance, on Blue's turn, they've already loaded up all those guys, and then they decide to sail one, two, three into Lincoln. 
They're now in Lincoln and they can use one of their tasks. Each turn, you can only do one of three tasks, which is trade, raid, or settle. This turn, they decide to trade some tasks there. That would be worth four victory points because Lincoln's worth four. It would be worth an additional two points if it met the goods in demand. Goods in demand can change throughout the game based on rune cards played. So, for instance, now let's say turns passed, everyone's gone. Now, the blue player decides they want to raid Lincoln. It's now easy to raid Lincoln because they've been traded with previously. And so they view the Vikings as more friendly as opposed to hostile. Boy, were they ever wrong. So here, you can see the blue player. This would normally be kept off the board, but they have four Vikings. You can only raid with a max of three, though. When raiding, you roll one at dice at a time, and it has to exceed the value of the town. Since it's been traded with, it's one less. Normally, before the trading, it would be a five or six. However, now, it can be a four, five, or six, because the value's reduced. So let's roll. Okay, we got a four. That made it. So that means this town has been successfully raided by the blue player. They also get the value of this town, which is three. Uh, they're all hidden and automatically assigned at the very beginning of the game. So it's going to be different each time what are the more valuable towns, which makes for uh, you know interesting replay. Makes it a lot easier to, to replay the game, I think. After it's been raided, somebody else or next turn, blue player can attempt to settle. It's settling is similar to raiding, except uh, like you still take into the same value, except that you roll all the dice at once. Each dice that doesn't make it, so I got a six, four, and a two. So I would lose one guy. You always lose one guy whenever your dice roll doesn't make it. But the other two made it, and then I would place a guy here, which means that's now been settled by the blue Viking player. Settlements, unlike the other things like trading and stuff, don't score until the very end of the game. At the end of the game, the value of the settlement is the number here times the other number of settlements that the player has in the same region. So right now, Lincoln's four. Let's say the game had progressed enough and they'd settled two. Both of these now were worth eight. So it'd be a total of 16 points. So you want to settle within the same area. There's different areas throughout the board. You know, there's the yellow area, there's blue area, you know, northern France, northern Germany. You've even got uh, Iceland up there. There's a, a bunch of different areas to play. Again, the game ends, though, only when the sagas are finished. So, and the sagas, if you complete enough of them, can definitely put you over the top. So it's neat how this game works, you know. You're kind of, there's, it can be a lot of sort of screw your opponent over by finishing a saga at the last second that they were working on. Because again, for instance, this trade here with York and Lincoln. So let's say, you know, the blue player's already traded with Lincoln. And the yellow player would come and trade with York. The person who completes the saga and trades, does the final trade with Norwich, they get the, the Saga card and the potential 10 points it's worth. You would then draw in a new Saga and replace it. You go through the Saga 1 cards first, then the Saga 2. When the last three Saga 3 cards are up, there's three turns left in the game. Now, if you notice, you can see there's different colors for the various oceans. That's because they all move at different speeds. If you can see here, these are the default speeds. So on, if you're in the North Sea, you can only move three spaces each turn. Or in the East, only four. There's a wind marker that goes there as well that can change uh, you know, by adding modifier of one positive or one negative, the speed that your boats can go without starting to lose troops or supplies. 
So it's a very well produced game, as you can see, some lovely plastic big pieces. The board's beautiful, very stylized. I would really recommend getting this game if you like American games at all. Unless you're an American player who only wants that direct conflict. However, I, I think it's a fun game. You're not going to have too many hurt feelings. There's definitely the screw your opponent element, though, by stealing sagas at the last second or settling areas where they plan to fully complete the settlement, you know, to deprive them of points at the end of the game. Always a very fun game. Rating is important, and there's a special rating bonus at the end for the person who's rated the most. Just uh, generally a fun game. Plays in about an uh, hour and a half to two hours once everybody knows the rules. So it doesn't take too long. You know, it's not like some of these American games that can just go on for hours and hours like Axes and Allies. It's, it's definitely accessible. And uh, it's tough to find, but because it's been, <coughs> excuse me, it's been out of print for a while, but if you can find it, definitely recommend picking up this game. Excellent fun game, you know, recreates kind of the Vikings pouring out of Scandinavia and uh, raiding Europe. The rune cards, as I said, give it a unique flavor. Can't complain with this game.